Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to uh, discuss how to write Newton's second law equations for uh, a rigid body for general plane motion. So left hand side here, you know, in theory we're looking at some sort of object. That object has some sort of center of gravity here, which I've labeled G. I've shown uh, what three force vectors acting on it, but again there can be many, many, many more. And in theory here we can find the net force by the vector sum of f1 plus f2 plus f3 and that net force is equal to ma by Newton's second law. Now if I go ahead and put the ma term over here on this picture on the right you know it might look something like this. Now as far as how we um, write Newton's second law equations, generally what we would do is we would do this by components or we would do it in directions. So generally we replace the MA with its X component. So this might look something like this and I might call this MAX and its Y component. and I've just drawn them in their assumed positive directions. So now we can actually write two Newton's second law equations. First would be sum of all forces x direction equals ma in the x direction. Second, sum of all forces y direction equals ma in the y direction. All right. Third, now we can talk about uh, torques or rotation. These forces generally could create a torque about the center of gravity. So in my kinetic picture over here I could put an I alpha term for rotational effects about the center of gravity in which case we can write a third equation sum of all torques equals I alpha about the center of gravity. So in general here we've got three uh, forces we can write for a body in the plane. Uh, sum of all forces x direction equals max, sum of all forces y direction equals may, sum of all torques about the center equals I alpha. And again these torque terms would be, you know, if I take a look at force 2, force 2 has a line of action that looks like this. Force 2 times that distance would give a counterclockwise torque about the center. And you could in theory do the same thing for every single uh, force vector. All right <clears throat> now Another thing we can do is actually write a torque equation about some other point. So maybe I pick a point on the body like uh, maybe right here. I'm going to call this P. All right, and then in this picture P is oh, right about here. We can also sum torques about P. So sum of all torques about P equals now in the picture on the left, it's it's uh, hopefully fairly evident here, like force 3 acts along this line, so force 3 times this distance would give the torque about P. Force 2 acts along this line, so force 2 times this distance gives torque about P. Force 1 acts all along this line, so F1 times this distance gives the torque about P. Now I didn't talk plus or minus signs um, because it's not specific enough ex of an example to worry about, but suffice to say I can pick any point on this body and some torques about that point. <clears throat> now on the right hand side, the I alpha term is a rotational term and still needs to be there, right? So we've got I alpha where that I is about G, the uh, center of gravity of the object. I'm going to go ahead and put a G there. However, that's not the only torque on the right hand side. This MA here, I like to call these inertial terms, is acting along this line. And it's, equ it's equivalent to force because remember force equals mass times acceleration. So the inertia of that object also creates a torque about P. And the torque is going to equal MAX times whatever this distance is here. And I'm going to go, go ahead and just call that distance in this picture uh, Y for now. Max times y. That torque in this uh, configuration would be negative because I'm writing equations in a standard right positive, up positive, counterclockwise positive uh, fashion. And this Ma points right, and you'll notice that that term, the torque term created by Ma, 
about p is clockwise, hence the minus sign. Right? Looking at this term, this may, this mayx all along this line, and you notice there's a distance here to the line of action for the may. I'm going to call that distance x. And then the torque term is going to be minus may times x. And again, that's counterclockwise positive. So I'm going to go ahead and write this one more time over here. <clears throat> so if we sum torques about point G, you'll notice that MAX and MAY go right through G. But if we move the point from G to some other point P, the right hand side of this equation needs to include terms for the uh, translational uh, inertia of the body. So basically this MAX, which is equivalent to net force X direction, creates a clockwise moment. This MAY, which is equivalent to net force in the Y direction, creates again a clockwise moment. So here's our equation of motion for rotation if we write it about G. If we do sum of all torques about some other point, P, that's going to equal I alpha minus MAX times Y, where again Y is whatever this distance is, minus MAY times X, where again the X is going to be whatever the distance here is from the MAY to the point P. So this is what I would call kind of a, the equation of motion for general plane motion and again these would be distances not coordinates the way I've set this up because um, Oh, because these have the correct plus and minus signs already based on counterclockwise positive and um, all three of these terms need to be considered. So when writing general plane motion for any torque equations that's not about the center of gravity, make sure you have not only the I alpha term, but the inertial terms, or if you read the Hibbler text, they call these the kinetic moments um, for the MA terms about some point. Hope this uh, video helps kind of describe general plane motion. I'll go ahead and write some examples. Have a great day.